This should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, three. Lovely. Good evening, everyone. It's Thursday night. It's 8 p.m. It's our last show of 2021, but you are welcome to the Maastricht edition here on Facebook Live. I'm your co-host, Tracy, and together with Joe, we'll be bringing you our regular segments and the usual fun and festive games. Next to that, we'll also be joined by three lovely ladies tonight. Uh, Barasing will be joining us to treat us to a little Christmas concert, so stay tuned. Yay! Hello everybody, welcome to the Maastricht edition. Here we are again, and yes, as Tracy said, it's our last show of the year! Cheers! 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 I've got me... Ho, ho. I, I've, I've got a... Look at, look at this, isn't this a cute little mug? Very, very cute little antler things, very festive. It I'm is! On... I'm on the bubbles. Uh, uh, some people close by might call this dog wine insider joke, but it's all good. And bubbles, uh, as festive as you can get, really. So, well, it, it yet, is the, the season yeah. to be bubbly. Tis. Move over, jolly. Replace that with tis the season the to be bubbly. bubbly. <laughs> la, 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 yes. la, 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 there she goes. Well, while uh, Tracy's getting her antlers, I'm just going to uh, introduce you to my two new friends here. Um, and actually, I don't, I have, well, I, they're not new. They've been around for quite a while. In fact, they've been around for so long that um, if I press this button here, nothing happens. And it's supposed to happen. They're supposed to dance. And they, and, and they don't work anymore. And I, and I never named them. So if anybody's got any suggestions, I've got a snowman and a penguin. They're very cute. They are just a uh... I'm thinking Pippi for the penguin and uh, maybe Frosty for the snowman. Oh, so original. Excellent. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's best to stick with what you know. The classics are always classics, right? Uh, they you know. are. And speaking of classics, there's been an awful lot of classics coming up on TV this past week, hasn't there? Hasn't there, Just You can always tell it's this time of the year because the TV scheduling has suddenly gone a bit out of whack, hasn't yes. it? Yes random movies on and Wallace and Gromit are everywhere so but yes <laughs> it is that time of year again but oh, not to worry we shall all make the best of it and have another rather unusual Christmas I expect but yeah there you are yeah well how's your Christmas going to pan out do you think Tracy what are, what are your plans yeah, well, actually, it's not going to be terribly different to what we had originally hoped we would be doing. Um, we're going to probably spend the Christmas Eve. As you know, here in the Netherlands, Christmas Eve is the big the big day, isn't it? Which is something I still struggle to get used to after all my time living away from Ireland. Because in the UK and Ireland and Australia or whatever, Christmas Day is the kind of, is the big deal, right? So it seems still odd to me after all these years to be opening presents on Christmas Eve. Or is it just me? I'm not sure. <laughs> Well, I've never opened a Christmas. Well, no, actually, I, I tell a lie. Well, I seem to remember when I was younger, there was always um, a little present from the tree that yeah. we could uh, that I could open on Christmas Eve. It was the, the, just a nice. tiny little thing from the from the tree. But then everything else, yes, that would be um, uh, in the morning. And then uh, uh, when I grew up, it was Joe in the kitchen. So everything got opened after lunch, and that's oh, the way it seems to have continued, actually. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Because, you, like you say, you grow up with one one thing, and then it changes and morphs yes. into something else. So, but okay, presents will get opened at some point, and I suppose that's uh, that's uh, also nice. I was quite pleased, actually. Uh, Dave and I managed to, it's a bit strange, we managed to get tickets to go to Christmas Day Mass, would you believe? Oh. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure if, if any watchers are, are going to church over Christmas, but I, I always find Christmas Day Mass to be quite a nice thing to attend. And here in Maastricht, they actually do a service in English on, on mm -hmm. Christmas Day. And um, they had to cut their capacity from 150 to 50, given the recent uh, yeah. regulations. And you kind of had to you know, literally walk by and pick up an entry. Isn't that weird? Things. Very, very strange. I was like, God, this uh, this is the weirdest thing I've come to church for. So, hello. Yes. 
Catherine <laughs> But I was quite lucky because there was three tickets left and I nabbed two of them. So we're going to go to, to church on Christmas Day for a little, you know, holiday vibe. And who knows, there might even be some carol singing in the church. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, so we're going to look forward to that. And for the rest, um, there's uh, there's booze in the fridge and bubbles have been secured. And uh, I think it's going to be a lot of eating, drinking, movies, napping, eating again, more napping, that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> that sounds, sounds perfect. Lot of fun. Indeed. Excellent. And of course, a Boxing Day walk, weather permitting. Weather permitting, yes. Well, um, I, got, I got the impression we had a, a couple of days ago, it was really, really cold. But I think it's supposed to be warming up a little bit, but you're probably going to enlighten us with about that in the news. Indeed. Stay tuned for the latest, but keep in mind, it's changing every other hour, it seems. So yes. Who knows? A bit like the restrictions. Well, it is a little bit, I suppose. We are nothing if not adapting, right? So we're going with the flow, as they say. But yeah, there's the other day I read that there was the chance of a white Christmas here in Limburg. And now, uh, more recently, there is no chance. And who knows, tomorrow, maybe there is a chance again. So <laughs> let's see. It, it'll keep it surprising, if nothing else. Yeah, well, um, my friend Frosty would be very happy if there was a, a little bit of snow. Well, I have to tell you, Joe, um, you know, while we were talking about that, Frosty perked up a little bit. So I think he's very excited at the prospect of a white Christmas. They could well be up for it. I'll tell you who else is up for it. Lucy and Renee, they're in the house. Good evening. Lovely to have you with us. And maybe, uh, Lucy and Renee, uh, you can let us know what are your plans uh, over Christmas. We would love to know. Yes. Anybody else out there? Let us know. What are you doing over Christmas? Wherever you are in the world, I know the restrictions are varied depending on which country you're coming from, but we'd love to know uh, what you are getting up to. Now, I do have a bit of an update for you. On bum, bum, bum. The, da, 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 um, as far as the Gavla goat is concerned oh. in Sweden... Now, oh. you know where I'm going with this, don't you, Tracy? I, I already know the story, you know, but, but, but perhaps others haven't heard it yet. Well, I have been telling everybody for the last couple of weeks about Gavla the Goat in Sweden, this whopping mm. great big uh, erection, <laughs> for want of a better word, <laughs> of a yes. goat. Uh, <laughs> that is a Christmas uh, tradition uh, in Sweden. Um, and unfortunately, it's been burnt down. Which yeah. has become another kind of tradition, actually. They've been building yeah, well, this. Oh, yeah, God. We should, we should specify this is it's not a real goat. It, it's been it's one that's been built up. Exactly, like, yes. It's, paper it's a wood. structure, if you will. Exactly, which is which is quite traumatic. But, I mean, my goodness, just to clarify, in case people are thinking that people in Sweden are setting live goats on fire, that would not be good. Well, I have to confess, if, if this was real, considering the size of it, I'd be a little alarmed anyway, because it's absolutely <laughs> massive. But yes, um, up at last Thursday, um, I told you guys, it's still there, it's still up, and um, uh, everything's fine with it, although there had been this thing, look, to cut a long story short, since 1966, they've been building this thing. And over the years, there has been another tradition that's been coming in where it's got burned down. But this year, they've been absolute, uh, had been absolutely fine up until last Thursday. When I told you guys it's still there, Friday morning, it had been burned down. Um, right. A man in his 40s has been arrested for setting uh, a light to it um, because they have this um, uh, CCTV that's been uh, watching it all the time. Um, but, uh, yeah, what a shame because there's so much work that goes into it. There is. And it's quite a chap who's been arrested. So is it something that it's like a challenge or a dare every year for somebody to go and Maybe. burn down the structure? Maybe. Maybe. But apparently, I mean, it's not mm -hmm. just get, getting burned down over the years. It's actually survived an attempt of kidnapping via a helicopter. Wow. I know. I tell you, the Swedes have a lot of time on their hands this time <laughs> of year. But, uh, yeah, yeah, so that's, that, that's Gavel of the Goat for you. It's, um, okay. it's, it's a shame, but it will be back next year. Um, and they've always got one of these uh, cameras on it, so you'll be able to watch it again next year. But, uh, yeah, so that's the latest on the goat. I just thought I'd okay. let everybody know. Well, thank you, Joe. I, I can't speak for everyone, but my evening is surely enriched by this information. There you go. See? We, <laughs> that's what I'm here for. Enrichment. Enrichment. <laughs> I'll tell you something else that I'm here for as well. Oh, yes. I think also I'm here to let you know about Book of the Week. 
Now that's some enrichment. And I know the book of the week you're going to mention this week, and it's a good one. So let's make it an extra good song, okay? Are you ready, Joe? I'm uh, bracing myself. You're born ready. It's time for Book of the Week, Book of the Week. Uh, uh. Book of the Week, Book of the Week. Uh, uh. Book of the Week, Book of the Week. Book of the Week. Uh, uh, uh. Book of the Week. <laughs> hey! oh, God. Like, I think it gets worse. Every sorry, Kirsty. We're gonna have to come up with a better theme song for this segment in the new year. I shall give it some thought. Well, I don't heart. know because actually, we've got somebody here who <laughs> has been listening in by the name of Vaughn Taylor. Oh, no, of all nights, he chooses to dial in. Oh, god, <laughs> can I have a do over? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, daddy's here. <laughs> Hello, Daddy. Uh, hello, Ireland. Oh, says, uh, wishing you a very happy Christmas to both of us. Thank, um, thank you. Also so to Dave much. and Little Tubbs. Oh, well, of course. Probably most important for Dave and Little Tubbs, really. <laughs> yeah, kind of just. There and we are. He, he has a so Christmas much. joke for us. Oh, no. Is it broadcastable, Joe? Uh, apparently. <laughs> right. <laughs> what does an angry mouse send at Christmas time? What does an angry mouse send at Christmas time? Hmm. I'm. I'm. My mind is boggled. What? What is it, Joe? Cross mouse cards. Oh God. <laughs> I can see where you get your bad jokes from. I'm sorry, but you two are so related. So related. Jokes, woman. This is quality comedy, I'll have you know. <laughs> it's the delivery, Joe. You, you, you didn't sell it properly. Oh, that's sorry, yeah. Of course, that's what it is. <laughs> okay, back to Book of the Week. Oh, book of the week. <laughs> I'll, stick, I'll stick with what I know, which is Book of the Week. And this okay. week, coming from Kirsty at the English Bookstore in Maastricht, she's gone for an absolute classic here. She's gone for Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. Now, I know you're a fan of Agatha Christie, uh, yes. Tracy. But are, yes. you, are you a fan of the books or is it just watching it? Oh, both. I love Excellent. the series and I also have quite a number of the uh, the books in my collection, in my bookcase downstairs. So, um, And including Murder on the Orient Express. Very nice. Excellent stuff. Well, Murder on the Orient Express might be Agatha Christie's most famous story, and for good reason. It follows the beloved Belgian detective, Hercule Poirot, <laughs> travelling the fabled Orient Express. A mm. snowstorm stops the train, and when morning comes, a passenger is discovered, stabbed to death in his locked room. With the snow, the murderer must still be on the train, and it is up to Poirot to figure out who it is. And on a train full of fascinating characters, he's in for a challenge, because who knows when the killer will strike next. Everyone has a motive, and everyone has an alibi. Dun, dun, dun. It's a classic. It's a very good read, actually. And, you know, the, the first time you see it or read it, you're like, oh, my God, dun, 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 who, who knew? Uh, so a good one. A very nice choice from our Kirsty. I would also recommend Evil Under the Sun, also one of my personal favourites as well. And also Murder at the Vicarage is also quite a good one. Oh, there's lots of lots. What I find fascinating with Agatha Christie is whenever you see the TV adaptations, um, it's a real ensemble cast. Everybody wants to be in Ag Agatha Christie. That's true, yeah, uh, indeed, because I believe last Christmas, it seems so long ago now, talking about last Christmas, but there was a series, wasn't there? A sort of mini-series with yeah. various, uh, and like you say, very big name actors from the big screen who were suddenly Absolutely. appearing on the screen. So Absolutely. yeah, but very nice, yeah. Very good tip, as usual. It is a good tip. And also, um, she does recommend, if you're looking for something that's a bit more modern, um, which is similar to Agatha Christie, you might like to try The Guest List or the Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. Um, so very similar. Uh, you've got a murder to solve, um, bad weather. <laughs> yes. Characters are isolated again. So, yeah, it's just the same sort of thing. So this is uh, obviously a good read over Christmas if you, if you fancy putting your feet up. 
indeed the guest list actually I, I also have this in my bookcase upstairs and this, I believe also it won some sort of um, prize or some sort of um, thing like that so it's actually coming quite highly recommended so that's quite uh, indeed another one of these sort of whodunits which is uh, they're always fun to read so uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this can be got at the English bookstore um, you can still tomorrow if you want to you've still got a chance tomorrow to get any books that you need to fill somebody's stocking on Christmas Day. Indeed. I think, uh, do you have to sort of make a pre-appointment, Joe, in order to pass by? Just, yeah, just just uh, uh, send them a message and say, this is uh, the book or books that I want, and they'll tell yeah. you what time you can come in, and you can pick them up anytime tomorrow, according so to the still, appointment. Still time to get, shop, get to the shop, because unfortunately, if you order anything online tonight, most things will only arrive as of Monday or Tuesday next week. So the online way in now is probably a bit too late so you've got you've really got to do this kind of uh, uh click and collect or whatever you want to call it yeah so, uh, interesting mm -hmm. interesting yes, but uh, <laughs> yeah good recommendations for sure so uh pop along to the english bookstore and uh, they'll sort you out now oh, wow. as we said at the top of the show we have the lovely ladies from veracing they're going to be joining us uh, later on for a little chat and a bit of a sing song which is uh, very nice and you may remember that one of the members of Racing is the lovely Christina, who also helps us out here in Maastrichter. And mm -hmm. she is now going to be coming up with a, um, a few little recommendations of some things that you might be able to get up to over the next few days. So here's Christina from Maastrichter. Hello, no. it's Christina from the Maastrichter. I, as I'm sure you are, am all dressed up with nowhere to go as we approach our second Christmas in lockdown. However... I have some local tips and tricks for you, which I hope will help make your Christmas as joyful as possible. As you know, this lockdown was so unexpected and so last minute. I don't think many companies had time to set up any live streams or online concerts, but I have managed to find one, the Nutcracker from the National Ballet of the Netherlands. They have a live stream, it was set up already. So it's on Christmas Eve, the 24th at two o'clock. Tickets are 12.50. And the Nutcracker, if you don't know, the music is by Tchaikovsky. So you've got this beautiful, grand, luscious ballet music. And the story is a classic story of a girl receiving a Nutcracker as a gift. And then the Nutcracker coming to life. And then there's something about an evil mouse king that I can't remember. But all you need to know is beautiful music, beautiful staging and gorgeous dancing. And it's a real Christmas story to get you right in the mood. I remember seeing it when I was a little girl. <laughs> Another thing you can do if you have completely exhausted Netflix over the last two years, a lot of museums have online tours. They're free, kind of a virtual tour where you look at the paintings and you get explanations. It can be quite nice to spend a couple of hours looking at some art. Some of the major ones, the British Museum London, the Guggenheim in New York, even the Vatican Collection and our very own Van Gogh Museum and the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam are also there. The Rijksmuseum is a really nice setup actually. It really feels like you're kind of walking through. <laughs> I also wanted to give a quick recommendation for local last minute Christmas shopping. <laughs> if you've left it to the last minute, as many of us have, and suddenly the shops are closed, that can be quite a panic. <laughs> but there are some small local businesses that you can go to for some nice gifts um, that are still open. So the English bookstore, I know they're mentioned a lot on this, but you can order online or over the phone and collect in store. They have a beautiful selection of English books and children's books and toys and games. They're a small business really worth supporting. Remember, wine shops are essential, which is great news. <laughs> There's a lovely wine shop um, in St. Peter's that used to be my local on the Classy Way. It's a it's just a lovely shop and the man is 
absolutely fantastic. You tell him what you're eating, what your price is, what kind of things someone likes, and he'll, he's never given me a bad bottle of wine. Sadly, I don't know his name, but worth checking out and it has a great gift wrapping service as well. <laughs> They've also got spirits, some unusual gins for your gin and tonic. Highly recommend that as a gift place for anyone who likes to have a tipple. I don't know if you've been around the back of the Sphinx. There is Gedelde Welde, which is a big kind of health food, healthy living shop. They have lots of very beautiful, unusual ingredients. Delicious, delicious food. Another local recommendation for gifts I have, um, you can buy vouchers for theatre or cinema. So consider the Freitoff Theatre, they sell vouchers. Also the Lumiere, the cinema, they do kind of art house films. I think that's a lovely gift and it's showing our support for these arts enterprises who again have had to shut their doors last minute. This time of year can be so lonely for so many people. I won't make it home to see my family either. And obviously everyone's plans have been thrown up in the air. If you are finding yourself alone in Maastricht, there's a big international company called Internations. It's an expat community. You can join it for, f you can pay, but you can also join it for free. And they just organize local events. Uh, People set up their own groups, book clubs, walks in nature, blah, blah, blah. Of course, everything is online now. But if you're feeling the need for some company, that's the kind of thing I think is very useful during this time. And I'm sure you'll find a lot of like-minded people in similar positions. If, like me, you're a big foodie and you're really missing the restaurant experience, there are a lot of very nice restaurants in Maastricht that are making food boxes. So it's like a takeaway that you prepare a bit at home. So you have all the ingredients, most of it's cooked and you're just finishing things off. So it might be boiling some sauce on the stove or throwing some things in the oven, but the quality is very high if you get a good one. So I've tried the Rosa Moraine, that was absolutely delicious very good quality. And I think Le Courage, they are also providing these. And Noon, that lovely big restaurant with all their little happiers on the river. And Beluga Loves You, they also, I'm sure there are plenty more as well, but those are just some that spring to mind for me. So you can have a bit of luxury this Christmas as well that you don't have to cook yourself. And finally, I want to wish everybody a happy and a healthy Christmas. Look after yourself, look after each other, eat some delicious food, drink some wine, get some fresh air and try to make sure you have some interaction with someone in your circle. Okay, enjoy, see you in 2022. Bye. Yay, lovely stuff. Thank you, Christina. I have to say, considering uh, you'd think the whole of Maastricht had closed down, she still managed to yeah. come up with some top tips there, which is well, rather I good. Did. Yeah, indeed, it's all about being creative, isn't it? And, if, you know, sometimes if the challenge is tough, but you can find something. So it's good. Good to know. But what is like the, the centre of Maastricht at, at the moment, Tracy? Because I think you've been probably walking through the centre. Is the, is the market still on? Well, frankly, I haven't been out much, to be honest with you. But because, um, I mean, everything is is closed. So it is, it's very, very quiet. There's not much uh, traffic or footfall, as one might call it. And indeed, there was a Christmas market on the square, the fright off, and they've actually dismantle that now because people weren't Aww. able to go there anymore the lights are still up around the city uh, so there is some it's not completely dark and, and dreary looking mm -hmm. but indeed I mean it's it's quite strange I mean the supermarkets are open and super super busy um, uh, people can still get to the pharmacy people can still go to those kind of essential shops but of mm -hmm. course places like um, bookstores and some clothing stores it's kind of only by appointment and you kind of order online and then pick up your order and of course most people are back to 
you know, like old school online shopping yeah. for just ordering stuff at home and waiting for the deliveries to arrive. So, um, so yeah, it is certainly, um, I mean, it, yeah, we had some lovely frosty mornings the last couple of days, which have made everything look a bit prettier and nice. And it's all been very atmospheric and festive looking. Um, but as of tomorrow, apparently it's going to be more kind of that misty, horrible uh. rain that kind of just settles, <laughs> settles down. So things might turn a bit more gloomy, but um but yeah, I mean, what can you say? A lot of people are nipping across the border into Belgium and Germany where uh, there there are no um, closures and you can yeah. still go out. You can still go out to eat in Belgium and at you drive moment. half an hour at the <laughs> moment. Yes, at the moment. Um, but indeed, up to the last couple of days, I mean, a lot of uh, Dutch people were simply just going uh, half an hour across the border and uh, having lunch or going for dinner or, or shopping or whatever. So um, but indeed, I've heard that Germany are now starting to think about bringing in some uh, yeah. some restrictions. I believe that Spain has recently announced yeah. uh, again wearing of masks outside and so on. Yeah. Austria has been in the news recently. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the Netherlands was maybe the first of the European nations to kind of close things down. But it looks mm-hmm. in the coming <laughs> coming days that it could be the others are following as the well. The whole so world is coming to a grinding see. halt. Yes, it is. I know it, it can get you down a bit, really, can't it? <laughs> I mean. Oh, I think it's, it can. It's, it's tough because in the summertime, I suppose the days are brighter and, and the sun is out and you kind of can kind of entertain yourself a yes. little bit during, during winter days and particularly during Christmas time. If you're someone who celebrates the holidays, mm-hmm. I mean, it is, it's, it is hard if you can't be around your loved ones and big groups of people, isn't it? Well, the good thing is two days ago was the shortest day of the year, which means it's almost spring. Well, God, you are optimistic, my dear. Yes, it was. It was the winter solstice indeed. So uh, we are now ever so slowly. The lot There will be a stretch in the evenings. It does say. make a difference, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Psychologically, it helps. So we're over that curve. And now exactly. we're, <laughs> we're heading towards... Well, uh, once we get past Christmas and New Year, I know a lot of people are going to be quite uh, gloomy in January, but you do start noticing the difference. And especially by the time we got to the end of January, we've got a lot more light coming through and it really does make a difference. I mean, it does. It's dark now at what, 4.30, 5 o'clock. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a long evening, isn't it? But yeah, let's uh, let's keep that in mind. Hold tight to that, my dear. Well, hold tight to that. And while we're holding tight to it, let's um, put our feet up, have a glass of really bad Prosecco because it is time for This Day in History. And before you start, I would just like to announce that I've been joined by this very gorgeous festive cushion, which it says, lovely. it says Nullig Shana on the front. It comes from Ireland and it means Merry Christmas in Gaelic. So I thought I'd, I'd you know, send that out to everybody. It is beautiful. Could you say that again? Nullig Shana. Nullig Shana. Yes. Very nice. It is a lovely yeah. cushion. It's very pretty, isn't it? So, it uh, is. I, I, yes, you know, so now we've got... Um, uh, what do we call them? Pippi, Frosty, and the Little Cushion. It's it's yeah. like it's like a little, it's like a book. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to this day in history. Well, today it is Thursday, the twenty third of December. Yes, it is the twenty third December. Only two days to go. Two sleeps, and that's it. And then by within twenty four hours, it's all over and done with. So yeah. <laughs> Hat comes off, and that's it. Right, on this day in 1834, Joseph Hansom of London receives a patent for Hansom cabs. And if you don't know what those are, they're the London cabs. I say I didn't look the black cabs. The black cabs, yes. Ah. Yes, yeah. They, start, well, like they started off looking a little different, obviously, but that's they are the London cabs. And that was in 1834. Wow. Oh. Yeah, 50 years later, in 1888, Vincent van Gogh cuts off his left ear with a razor after an argument with fellow painter Paul Gauguin and sends it to a sex worker for safekeeping. Boy, that is is quite strange, that one. (laughs) We have another pattern here. In 1919, Alice H. Parker, she patents the gas heating furnace. And very grateful we are too. Thank you, Alice. You rock. Yeah, absolutely. 1922, on this very day, the BBC radio begins daily newscasts. And in 1954, the first human kidney transplant is performed by Dr. Joseph E. Murray at Peter Bent Brigham Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. 
1968 on this very day, Frank Borman, Jim Lovell and William Anders become the first men to orbit the moon. Mm. Uh, now, sticking with Agatha Christie, two mm. years later on this very day, seven, the 7,500th and 11th performance <laughs> of Agatha Christie's play, The Mousetrap, was recorded oh. in London's West End. Have you ever uh-huh. seen The Mousetrap? I haven't, would you believe? No, I, I haven't that's either. One, that's one I've not seen nor read. Yeah. So that's one for the list. <laughs> yeah, it's been, I think it's like one of the longest running plays or something. Yeah, like I think you're right. Yeah. On this day in 1993, Philadelphia, the first major Hollywood movie about AIDS, opens in theatres. And in 1994, fearing arrest by the FBI, gangster Whitey Bulger flees Boston and successfully hides from the law for the next 16 years. That's well, that's some good hiding. Yeah, that's, that's good that's idea. Impressive. <laughs> Two years later on this day, in 1996, four women are ordained priests in Jamaica. For the, they're the uh-huh. first ones in a 330-year Anglican history. Which is uh-huh. And I'm going to finish on this one, which is the balloon boy whose parents were sentenced in Colorado on this day in 2009. So there's a little bit of a story here, okay? Richard Heen, his father, carried out a hoax in which he told authorities his six-year-old son, Falcon, had floated off in a runaway saucer-shaped alien balloon. And he, okay. and he ended up being sentenced to 90 days in jail uh, in Fort Collins and his wife, 20 days, days of uh, jail for her role in the incident. So the... This was the, they called it the Balloon Boy Saga, and and viewers were riveted around the globe um, uh, on October the 15th when it actually happened. Um, It was all played out on live television at around 11 a.m. Richard Heen, a handyman and an amateur scientist, father of three boys, called the Federal Aviation Administration to report that a large balloon in his family... Um, uh, his family's backyard had become untethered and it was believed his son Falcon had crawled aboard the craft before it took off. Minutes later, he phoned a local TV station requesting a helicopter to track the balloon. A short time after that, he then called 911. Hmm. The homemade silver craft was soon being tracked by search and rescue, as well as reporters on the ground and in the air. The National Guard launched two helicopters to follow the balloon. Um, It ended up um, going over a runway at uh, Denver International Airport. Uh, They shut down the flight path. There was all kinds of stuff going on. Anyway, it ended up uh, uh, in a field. And then after a a search, they found the boy wasn't there. And then they found he'd been hiding at home all this time where he was safe. Turns out this hoax that the Heens uh, had started had all Mm. been because they wanted to get their own reality TV show. Oh, well, I mean, my goodness, really. Well, I should think, well, I... I don't think that probably, that didn't really work out for them, did it? Did it? No, it didn't, all, I, so. all, all I can think of that of that during the story is that um, the kid was called Falcon. You know, I know. Falcon. Uh, Falcon's fly. I mean, yeah, no. <laughs> they could have got their own reality TV show if only they thought it through a bit yeah, more. Exactly. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Anyway, here's a few birthdays for you. On this day, 1943, Harry Shearer, the American actor, voice of The Simpsons, was born on this day. The wonderful Eddie Vedder, from 1964, American rock singer from Pearl Jam. Carla Bruni, the Italian-French model, was born in 1967. And in 1985, Harry Judd, the British drummer from McFly, was born in Chelmsford, the UK. And a big shout-out to Alfie Samaji, who will be celebrating her uh, birthday on Christmas Eve tomorrow from Baku, oh. her dog who's wishing her a happy birthday that's so nice i love when the pets email in i think it's really nice when they do that it is it is it's a very clever dog he's very clever yes so happy birthday to anybody who is celebrating over the christmas period um and anybody um having uh christmas um any time around now i know it can always be a little bit tricky but i'm sure you're having a a, as best time as you possibly can so happy birthday and that was this day in history there they go oh there do golf clap (laughs) 
Thank you very much. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Right. And, yes. So we've got Sorry. girls coming up very shortly. Um, yes. And uh, we, oh, Christ, we're running behind time, actually, so we better we crack are. on. Are you, are you ready for the news, Tracy? I'm ready. I'm going to do it super quick because we need to get on. Excellent. Do, 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 right. do, 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 do. Tracy Taylor with the news. Thank you, Joe, and good evening, everyone. It's December 23rd, and you're watching the Maastricht edition on Facebook Live. First, to look at your weekend weather, and it will be dry but cold on Christmas Eve with some cloud and highs of 8. Christmas Day will be colder with daytime temperatures only reaching 5 degrees, along with a chance of rain. Boxing Day will be much the same. So, sadly, it seems at the moment there will be no white Christmas here in Limburg. Moving to your bulletin for tonight and a roundup of local and domestic news. The Netherlands remains dark red on the EU COVID map for the sixth week in a row. The total number of positive coronavirus tests is falling, but the decrease has not been fast enough in any of the 12 provinces for the country to step down to a lower warning level. The first antiviral medications to treat COVID-19 could be available in the Netherlands as of January. One of the pills is being made by Pfizer and the other manufactured in Harlem by MSD. The two pharmaceutical firms have already obtained provisional approval from the European Medicines Agency, but the Netherlands is still waiting for the final decision on the rollout of the medication. It seems the cabinet has asked experts to prepare a long-term plan on living with the coronavirus. Summers could be largely restriction-free, but COVID but coronavirus measures could continue to apply in autumn and winter. And following a social media campaign, it seems prickspate has been voted the Dutch word of the year. The word took over 82% of the votes and is defined as a feeling of regret someone has about having been vaccinated against any infectious disease. In other news, a Swedish company implanting microchips under the skin is promoting its devices for use as COVID-19 health passes. Though still rare, several thousand Swedes have opted to have an electronic implant inserted under the skin in recent years, eliminating the need to remember business cards, public transport cards and more recently vaccine passes. The Belgian government has agreed in principle to close its nuclear power plants by 2025, but left open the possibility of extending the life of two reactors if they could not otherwise ensure energy supply. Belgium's two nuclear plants, with seven reactors in total, account for almost half of the country's electricity production. And a three-legged donkey named Tommy is believed to be the first in the United Kingdom to be fitted with a prosthetic leg. The donkey was born with a deformed front leg, which left him struggling to walk and suffering a damaged back and shoulder. Specialists from Dorset created a bespoke prosthetic for Tommy to allow him to walk more comfortably. And the little donkey is now back on all fours and enjoying his newfound mobility. And finally tonight, the Maastricht Edition team would like to thank you all for your support over the past year and to wish you a very merry and peaceful Christmas and a happy and healthy 2022. And that's it for tonight. For more local news, you can follow RTV News in English on Facebook and Instagram. If you're a local business, be sure to check out the Support Your Local Business South Limburg Facebook page, a joint initiative between hashtag Maastricht and the Maastricht Edition. And if you want to discover events, concerts and cultural activities going on in Maastricht and the surrounding areas, head on over to the website of our partner, Maastrichter.com. If a historical walking tour is more your thing, check out Meet Maastricht, the key to your city. And finally, don't forget that you can always find us on the Maastricht Edition Facebook page, on YouTube, on Redbubble and on Instagram. For all the details, check out the MaastrichtEdition.nl. Nicely done, Al Tracy. Lovely stuff. Thank you, my dear. Yes. Uh, nice story about the little donkey. Oh, I know. I thought it was really appropriate. Yes. The donkey around Christmas time, little Tommy. And if you go on, for example, the BBC website, there's a little video, and it, it's just oh, I, I, just adorable. But so nice that um, I just follow um, a few accounts on Instagram where there's a lot more prosthetics out now for for animals, in dogs, cats, donkeys, and so on that get a prosthetic limb, and it's really nice to know. So good thing. Very cute. Very cute. Oh, look, the ladies have already joined Hi. us. Here oh, they are. <laughs> good evening for wrestling. Surprise. <laughs> it was a surprise, but a very nice one. <laughs> How 
Oh, Matthew, you ladies? Every name. Good. Very well. Thank you. All we, round the Christmas tree. We yeah. had our Christmas dinner. Yeah. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> It was actually a rainy. Oh, it could be in your next blog. Yeah, no, it should be. Uh, it was per actually Persian from the Persian restaurant. Oh, nice. Very nice. So for those people who are tuning in at the moment, who have been living under a rock and have no idea who you are, let's uh, um, introduce you to the world. You are Verassing, but let's go through the all three of you. Tell us who you are and what Verassing's all about. <laughs> well, um, I'm Jolina. I um, I'm a singer. I just I finished my studies in 2019, and then I started singing with uh, Andre Rieu. Uh, and then I met these girls over there. Uh, yeah, and that's uh, where it all started. That, that, that's what I've done. <laughs> She's the proper Maastrichter. She was born yes, I'm from Maastricht. Excellent. Oh, okay. yes. <laughs> she not, not like it. Not like these foreigners. Not like us. I'm real Zen. Excellent. Nice. And the little one in the middle. <laughs> I am Christina. I'm from <laughs> England, uh, and I moved to Maastricht uh, because of my job with Andre Rieu, where I met these guys, and yeah, <laughs> that's my story. Excellent. <laughs> And finally, finally, this is Madika. I'm from Holland. I'm from the center of Holland. Um, I'm from uh, an area which uh, grows fruit. <laughs> uh, um, it's called the Betuwe. I'm from Tiel. And uh, uh, before I came to Maastricht, I um, well, I was an opera singer mainly, and uh, I joined also the orchestra of André Rieu. And uh, well, um, we started uh, in the beginning of the first lockdown in 2000. Is that 20? 20? Yeah, 20. <laughs> yes. March. Yes. Yeah. So when uh, everything stopped, we couldn't perform anything anymore. We couldn't travel with André. And um, then we thought, uh, hmm, maybe we can keep busy uh, just with the three of us and make people mm -hmm. happy with uh, music. And that's what we did. Yeah. Excellent. We're still well, there. Let, let, let's just tackle the elephant in the room here because you keep mentioning Andre here. So let's let's just get let's establish this first. You're part of this massive orchestra that we see if we go and, and see Andre. So where do you actually fit in in all this? So the we're... right <laughs> right <laughs> corner. <laughs> okay, <laughs> literally. <laughs> we're uh, so we're in the choir. For Andre and we but we tour with him all over the world and we just managed to do one tour after 20 months uh, in Lisbon and now I think a lot has been postponed again yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, yes. it's a pity yeah you guys were in Lisbon quite recently and it was wonderful that you guys had the opportunity yeah. to put on those fabulous dresses uh once again <laughs> and get take to the stage but of course if life had been normal you guys would have been performing in the Mech uh, in in uh, yes. in December and that sadly has been pushed out as well so realistically and that we should get back to for us then joe but realistically with andre when do you guys think the next concert might happen next summer maybe oh, oh we hope we sh it should be before then we hope mm -hmm. to spain in uh, february okay so oh, um so far away Fingers yeah. crossed. We'll keep we'll keep oh, everything yeah. going across for you. But yeah, as uh, as we've already established, you three are doing your own thing. Never mind Andre. Mm -hmm. We'll just push him out the way. I mean, he's he's, he's not important. Let's just push him out the way for <laughs> You three girls have come together, and you've been doing these gigs around Maastricht, which at the moment, as we know, have been uh, postponed uh, for the time being. But whose idea was it for the three of you to get together? I think it grew organically. It grew, yeah, I think I think too. Maybe I and you were asked to do sing in some care homes or like in the courtyards of care homes during the mm. virus, 
And then we kind of said, oh, we'd already done some stuff together previously. So we yeah. said, oh, should we just do this because we're all in Maastricht? And, blah, blah, blah. and I think you've really pushed, like, oh, we've got something. We can do this. And you pushed the kind of marketing. Mark yeah, yeah. We, oh. but it was, I really felt that when we did uh, the first thing together, the three of us, there was like this moment of, oh, but this is really, and fun. And it kind of sounds special because you sing with three voices different from two or one sure. and yep. you have this yeah unique sound <laughs> also, I think the situation then it was very special to bring this music during the lockdown people mm. need so badly mm. so and then True. you could really feel and see and have, yeah. we enjoyed that so much yeah. so I think the lockdown brought something good for us in that yeah case. definitely yeah, and then we also had the time to work on it because we weren't on tour all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we uh, could. The, 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 the rehearsing that you're, you're actually doing, um, I'd like to focus on something which is very special between the three of you, and that is your harmonies. Oh. Now, is it something as a professional singer that comes naturally to you guys, or is it something that you really have to work on? It grows as well, I think. The yeah. more you sing together, for sure. The more you feel each other. Yeah. I I think it's not so natural for opera. No, because you're not in in op oh, yeah. in opera. You're more creating your voice as a like a one line thing, and you're not trying to blend with people. And when you're doing as we've been doing this kind of closer harmony, you really have to blend it. Otherwise, it just sounds like a mess. Yes. And you can't hear the harmonies because everyone's voice is wobbling all over the place. And yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we had to. Yeah. Well, but, for those of uh, the people out there who haven't heard you before, maybe we could listen to you now. How about that? I believe you might have a little Christmas treat for us. Ooh. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Well, it doesn't show signs of stopping, and I brought some corn for popping, and the lights are turned way down low. But if you really hold me tight, all the way home I'll be warm. The fire is slowly dying, and my dear, we're still goodbyeing. But as long as you love me so, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Oh, let it snow. harmonies because there is three of you but it sounds like there could be more of you it's oh, very it, but it, it's it's really clever is is that uh, how, how, how do i put it is it because of a particular harmony is it a finding some because because of course when you come to harmonizing i'm no expert but you could have various different ways of harmonizing of course but do you think there's a, a, a particular way that you can choose to harmonize that makes it sound so much bigger I think it's also because of the voices. The voices are different, but are also a bit similar. We, all, we have all female voices, so we have a, a, a certain range, range that we sing in. Mm -hmm. And then it like, yeah, it blends, no. it, yeah, it, it becomes like one. And I think um, the key is that we shouldn't uh, sing too... Um, how do you say to wide, wide from each other? Sure, so yeah. Quite close. It, yeah. yeah. When the harmonies are too wide apart, or like the top is too high and the bottom is too low, then it feels mm. a bit secure. Exactly. I think. But yeah. when we're yeah. like yeah. together, we're comfortable. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, it, it, it sounds it absolutely sense. magnificent. Mm. So going forward then into into next year, yes, you've got uh, the Andre stuff going on, but what about for, for you guys? Have you got any plans for next year? Well, we had. No, uh, again. <laughs> we had to cancel or postpone everything. We had a lot to do during Christmas, actually, yeah, that was... and uh, some um, concerts in the new year. But, um, mm. well, yeah, um, we might try some something online. Some live, yeah. a new year live new concert. concert. Yeah, That's we did it gonna... last year. We did it during Christmas. Christmas yeah. because I, we were in lockdown then, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we can yeah. all family, so we are allowed we're a to be together. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think this is an option because so many musicians, I mean, Joe, we also have, for example, Michelle Powell, the pianist who's been doing a lot of online stuff. And it seems to be a forum and a medium that people are really able to embrace and want to embrace. And it's also it's also easy. You know, everyone now has Zoom and this and that and the other. So it's definitely something people can can buy into and and enjoy at home. So um, I think Go for it. I think it would be really nice, wouldn't it, to have another New Year's or, you know, some festive um, performances that people can have have at home in their in their bubbles. So yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. at least something, you know, and it keeps you guys practicing and and rehearsing and fine tuning as well. So it's a win win, right? Having a purpose is really important. Yeah, sure. yeah I yes, guess. Sure. Yeah. How do you yeah. decide yeah. on what songs you're going to sing? Oh, no. Ooh. well. Um, every concert that we do, or if we give a concert for someone, uh, we ask for uh, requests. So actually, every concert we do, we learn some new songs and yeah. we learn new harmonies and we arrange it for our three voices. So now, in the meantime, we have quite uh, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, we built quite some repertoire. So we we can we can choose. <laughs> we should we okay. should. They do some sound of music for a new year. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Sound of music. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's some fantastic songs. Welcome. Uh, yeah. yeah. Do you have any requests? Oh, well, I think I actually ran this past Christina um, a couple of weeks ago <laughs> because uh, my nephew came to see you guys in Lisbon. Um, and I said that uh, maybe if you could throw some Metallica in there, it would go down quite well. So um... <laughs> I did. I actually, I mentioned that in the choir dressing room, and we were discussing it, but we we never got around. To that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I think uh, um, musicals, I think, is is a really good way to go actually, yeah. because uh, there's so many people that have a favourite musical. So uh, if I if if I was going to throw mine into the uh, i think i'd probably go with the king and i oh, actually that one. yeah we have some king, we and, have nice some king and i oh there you go sold yeah. <laughs> and some nice what, what's your favorite from the king and i um hello young lovers oh yeah that we could do that yes that's beautiful <laughs> absolutely beautiful yes um, oh and also we have some kind of uh oldie pop songs like some El Elton John your song the, some classics yeah. we like doing perfect those. day the mix perfect is nice yes. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Lovely. do lovely. anything someone suggests actually <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> be very careful if you start asking for requests it can all go horribly wrong <laughs> so if people do want to keep up with um, what you are up to and get the latest information about when you are back out there gigging how do they find you uh, well on Facebook or Instagram uh, on Verrassingsconcerten um, Verrassings yeah. concert maybe we can write it yes. <laughs> in uh, yeah. English yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We, we, sh we shall put all the information out there on our socials after the show, so don't so don't worry. We'll uh, we'll make sure everybody knows. And we're building a website. And we're building a website. So hey! We hope to have the website in 2021. Before Two. 20? No, before 20. Oh, okay. Yeah. 22. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Before yeah. the end of the year. Before the end of the year, you have to. Yes. Sorry. The good thing it's about lockdown nice. is everybody has improved their websites no end. <laughs> Lots of and skill, yeah. <laughs> Computer skill. Yeah. Computer. Excellent. Um, and before we say goodbye to you, you've given us also um, a little video that we're going to play at the uh, end of the show. Could you just tell everybody what uh, we can uh, uh, be listening to then? 
Yeah, so that that is Walking in the Air from the film The Snowman, and it's with our lovely, lovely harpist, who's also in the orchestra, and we're mainly at Christmas she joins us and we do some concerts. But that was actually the last concert, the day that the lockdown was announced. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, got one concert in. Oh. <laughs> Shut down. And we filmed it, we filmed the whole thing, so that's a yeah. snippet. There. Just on time. Yeah. Well, hopefully it won't be long before uh, you guys are back out there again. We yeah. really appreciate having you on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for the, the, the lovely singing. It was absolutely beautiful. Have a lovely Christmas. You too. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Merry and Christmas. we shall see you sometime next year. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Nice. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yay, lovely. Thanks ever so much, ladies. Bye. Take care. Bye. Oh, wasn't that lovely? Very nice. Very festive and in fitting with our final show of the year. Oh, absolutely. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Oh, oh. Excellent. Well, while we recover from all that, I think we probably uh, should nip over to Lucy at uh, Meet Maastricht oh. for, the, for the last time this year. Absolutely. What another way to end the show. I mean, we're pulling out the stops tonight, Joe. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's the <laughs> creme de la creme. Here's Lucy creme at Maastricht. No? no? Meet Maastricht. For another yeah, episode just, of honestly, Meet After all these years. <laughs> <laughs> wanderings about town while staying at home where it's warm and comfortable uh, I would like to talk today for a little bit about the Mormish. the Mormish. you all know where it is it is it is this grand building on the Vreedhof uh, this is it's late 19th century guys uh, it has more it, ha it has a different uh, sidewalk cafe now, but it is still easily recognizable, if only because there is still this little statue of Momus on top. This is how you can always find it in the row of buildings facing the churches, because that's Maastricht, of course, churches on one side, cafes on the other. So it's this building, and it is named Momus after a figure from Greek mythology, the god of uh, fun and games, mirth and nonsense, but also of speaking truth to power. It is only the jester who can tell the truth to the king. Um, Momus was a society in Maastricht founded in the 19th century in a period of deep despair when, when the city was under siege, cut off from the rest of the country and uh, still locked up inside its walls and people couldn't go anywhere and do anything and they were bored and depressed. And, and the rich burghers of town th thought, let's do something nice, lift spirits. So they founded the uh, Société, of course French being the predominant language of the elites at the time. Uh, they founded the Société de Momus, and um, from that point on, everything, anything, was in dialect. So uh, or all, the, all the rules and regulations of the organization, everything was in mistakes. And when they got the funds together to build their magnificent headquarters on the Vreithof, all the measurements were in elevens. We have a decimal system here, you realize. 11 is the number of the fools. Because right from the beginning, Momus was intended to entertain. Uh, their founding motto was Für plaisir and charité. Plaisir being fun, enjoying yourselves, uh, having, having uh, uh, funny stuff going on. And uh, charité, very close to the French and English, charité, uh, charity. It also intended to do something for the poor, of which the city had large, large numbers at the time. <laughs> Mormons started out by having large historical parades, uh, people dressing up and parading around town. 
and it evolved into um, uh, well a place where the where the where the, uh, the rich people would meet uh, a gentleman's club with uh, you know the the all the papers and the dinners and the balls and everything that goes along with gentlemen's clubs traditionally um, but also in uh, organizing carnival in Maastricht they are the the founders they have invented the 19th century version of the vaste lovend van Maastricht and out of mommers grew eventually with many breaks and mishaps and nonsense in between the present day group of um, usually fairly well-to-do gentlemen called the Templiers, who are now the organizers of the unorganizable chaos that is carnival which we will probably have to give a miss again this year still Mommas is about mirth and having fun has a connection to remaining hopeful and optimistic. I wish you all more than enough of what you need in that respect. Ah, oh, thank you, Lucy. The lovely Lucy from Meet Maastricht. Excellent stuff. And that was her last one of the year. I know, but it just doesn't it give you a taster for more? I love Lucy's segments. They're always so informative. Well, she did touch on uh, Carnival there. And of course, by the time we uh, we come back uh, in the new year, it won't be long after that when it is Carnival. Doesn't look like Carnival's going to happen again uh, next year which uh, for some people they're going to be quite happy about. But uh, we'll be talking more about that next year. And uh, uh, before we wrap up this evening, we must remind you we are not here next week. We are having <laughs> next week off. We're having a break and we will be back yeah. in the new year. So before um, you give us any titty bitties, Tracy, I just wanted to ask you, have you got any New Year's resolutions at all? Not yet. I shall first get through Christmas and then think about New Year's stuff. <laughs> so, frankly, no. <laughs> How about you, Jo? <laughs> um, I'm working on a day-to-day -day basis. It's more like right. uh, getting from nine to five and there keeping my sanity, I think. Yeah. I think that could be a general resolution for everybody, really. Just, you know, take Trying it to hour. Keep sane. Yeah, it's taking keep saying take it hour by hour and just you know go with the flow as they say but no I, I generally don't make resolutions anyway but after the year we've just had honestly I think I'm just going to first concentrate on having a nice and happy Christmas trying not to miss home too much mm -hmm. and then looking ahead to the new year and, and thinking about maybe some travel plans maybe some nice things that are coming along on the track uh, hopefully uh, in in 2022 so fingers crossed so check with me in January it's a date. Right. So, any titty bitties to finish off with? Oh, yes, I have I have three. Three. Ooh. My darling, I've got three. So, as we all know, tomorrow is Christmas Eve. Yay! Yay. Yay. Give, me a bit of, give me a bit of Essex, girl. <laughs> oh, bloody lovely. Oh. <laughs> that was really a bit. Okay, well, um, as we've touched on earlier, um, the shops are closed. You can't you can't really go out and buy anything unless you're going to get some alcohol. The wine shops and um, you know uh, Gall and Gall and places like this are still open, so you can still buy booze for people. And um, yeah, Robert also, for example, and um, wine shops and things like that are still open. And you can also go to the supermarket and so on. However, if you're looking for something a little bit more exciting, perhaps or something different, you could consider the fabulous Kirsty and the folks at the English Bookstore. They are still open tomorrow. You can still go online. They've got a web shop. You can still book something. <laughs> excuse the pun. Book uh -huh. something and go and pick up your book. Um, so that could be an option. Also, the fabulous Petra at Euler Concept Store is still open, for example, takeaway glue wine and some little uh, nice uh, Christmassy festive bites, which you can also um, check online and book an in-store shopping appointment. So you still have an option to go there. And she has lots and lots 
stuff. Like, I mean, she's kind of greedy, really, because she has all the stuff. <laughs> so you could pop by there and check it out for something quite special. And lastly, one I saw on Instagram while we were watching um, some videos earlier, We Are Vintage, which is a secondhand clothing store here in Maastricht. They're also uh, posting some um, examples of clothing they have uh, on Instagram. And if you see something you like, you can sort of kind of send them a little message and say, I want to buy that dress or I want to buy that jumper and then pop by and pick it up. Uh, they prepare a little package at the door and this is sort of a kind of handover. You know, So you've got a few things like that. Um, also, News and Maastricht are posting a lot of... Um, uh, information about restaurants that are offering uh, Christmas boxes over the holidays. Um, many restaurants uh, are delivering special Christmas menus that you can have on Christmas Day and you can maybe still get lucky and order something in and uh, yeah, for the rest I mean, that's pretty much it. So there's, there's not much else to say, to say really. Um, well, I think that's enough to be going on with. We've yeah, only got yeah. one day till Christmas. True, and there's a lot of stuff on Netflix and Disney stuff, <laughs> and, and you can read your Agatha Christie, and, and there stuff. you go. You can practice your sing songs. You can check online for people like Farassing and Michelle Powell, who are maybe offering some Christmas concerts over the holidays, which is a half an hour or one hour, and can be something really nice to to bring a little something festive to your to your home this, these holidays but um but yeah i mean in the end we will all try to manage and get through but fingers crossed it will be a, a, a merry christmas under the circumstances it will be a merry christmas so well that just leaves us to say a really really big thank you because you know uh we didn't expect to be doing this again for another year on online like this um, and you guys, you've stuck with us for the whole year and we are very, very grateful um, because if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be doing this. So thank you so much uh, for another brilliant year. Of course, uh, lots has happened this year. One of the big things, of course, was that uh, Matt left the show, which was a real big shame. But yeah. we, uh, we're, we're still in contact with Matt and he will pop in from time to time. Um, but uh, yeah. We shall still be here. Tracy and I will be back the first week in January. We will be back. Um, so we're going to put our feet up. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much once again for joining us. And we wish you the merriest of Christmases. Thank we you do. so much. Gareth Mahagut, August Nalik Shanadiev. I could have said it better myself. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bena Dalden. <laughs> oh, Bye. Oh, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Cheers. Oh.